Hola, soy Eduardo y bienvenidos a My Zen Journey. Hoy traigo un episodio muy especial porque tuve la oportunidad de entrevistar a Sebastián Yara del canal Smelling Great y que ahora en Instagram se hace llamar como The Perfume Guy. Y señores, la verdad es que estoy súper emocionado de presentárselos porque si hay un reseñador de perfumes en YouTube que admiro y que la verdad respeto mucho su opinión, es a Sebastián. Entonces, pues la verdad creo que va a estar muy interesante. Quiero platicarles que para la dinámica de esta entrevista... Igual que como lo he hecho con otros invitados, yo publiqué hace un tiempo un post diciendo que iba a tener una plática con él y muchos de ustedes me contestaron con algunas preguntas específicas que querían que le hicieran. Eh, de ahí yo seleccioné cuáles eran las que más se repetían y sobre eso hicimos la temática de la entrevista. Casi todo va muy alrededor de quién es Sebastián, cómo empezó, cuáles son sus perfumes favoritos, etcétera, etcétera. Entonces, la verdad es que la plática quedó muy interesante Sí, ya la había grabado hace un tiempo, pero como sabes, este tema de estar eh, subtitulando el video es una bronca. Pero bueno, ya lo logré hacer. Entonces, no se te olvide, en la parte de aquí abajo, en donde están los tres puntitos en configuración, tú puedes activar los subtítulos y ahí vas a escoger eh, México y en español, que ese es el que hice yo, porque obviamente por default te va a dar los que están en inglés. Entonces, pues ojalá te, te guste, ojalá te deje algo, pero la verdad yo encontré cosas muy interesantes. Entonces, nos vemos ahorita. Hi guys, well, uh, another day, another interview, and now I have St uh, Sebastian here on my channel, and you know, I'm very, very, very uh, excited to have him here because uh, it's one of the first you perfume YouTubers that I followed since when uh, perfume YouTubers started, and uh, so I'm a little bit, you know, nervous, but... Uh, <laughs> Don't be. <laughs> How you been, Sebastian? I've been good. Good, tired, good, lots of work, lots of busy times, but surviving the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been a little bit crazy these times, but, uh, well, um, like I told you, you know, uh, the main, the main thing about this, this talk, it's, uh, I posted, uh, a, a post <laughs> in YouTube about, you know, our talk. So I got mm -hmm. a, a lot of questions from my followers saying, you know, I wanted uh, the, the main theme of this, uh, this talk to be like, you know, so I had any kind of questions there. So I tried okay. to, you know, like, um, try to see which were the ones that were more recurring. And um, I got like two main themes. One, it's who is Sebastian? You know, it's, we know he's, you know, uh, Uh, a milestone into in, in the perfume uh, review community but who is him you know personally you know when did you start collecting everything like that so that's one of the parts and uh, the second part we will discuss i think current themes in perfumery so um i don't know what you think about this kind of uh, topics great ah, i'm like all it? for it Let's do it. <laughs> perfect, my friend. Perfect. All right. So, uh, okay, let's start with the personal part, which is, and you know, I'm going to tag along uh, uh, with my followers because I have been following you for, yeah, a lot of years, but I was never really, you know, uh, who is Sebastian? Um, when did you start collecting perfumes? Mm -hmm. When did I start collecting perfumes? I th think uh, I've always been into perfumes. Okay. Uh, being Middle Eastern, I'm, I'm, I was born in Lebanon, Lebanese guy here. So uh, Arab people, I'm Armenian. So we all love smelling fragrances. My parents both loved, 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 loved to wear big fragrances, you know, spray the big fragrances and spray them a lot so I could smell them all the time. And I would really see them do it and I'd go grab their fragrances and try them myself. So I think that might have left an impression, but it's not just them. I'd smell perfumes everywhere because everybody wore them in the Middle East because they like to smell great. So I think that might have something to do with it. But also my dad um, grew a lot of plants. So he used to grow vegetables and herbs and fruits. So they all have smells. So smell was very important for me. And I guess maybe um, I have a stronger sense of smell Perhaps I had something to do with it. So all of that combined really got me interested in smelling great, smelling fragrances and buying and collecting. Okay. That's kind of, I think that's kind of the, the starting point. But, you know, I was always into buying them up until the late 80s when I started buying my own fragrance. 
into the 90s, all the way through the 2000s. I think by the end of the 2000s, early 2010s, I was watching a few guys on YouTube, Robes and Al and maybe one or two other guys that are no longer there. Yeah. And when they were doing them, I thought, you know, what? I could do this myself. Why not try? So that's, that's so the that's, way it happened. Wow. That, that's great to hear. And uh, I have to follow up questions there. Uh, did your parents uh, also, you know, um, had like a perfume collection or they only liked the, the, the perfumes? No, they had a perfume collection. Oh my, God, yeah. my parents were both clothing designers, so they were into the fashion industry and all that good stuff. So they liked to smell great, look great and all that good stuff. So, um, but I, I, I remember a lot of fragrances that my mom wore, my dad wore. So they just really had left an impression on me as far as, and fragrances back then, the vintage stuff that you can get now are nothing like what you buy in the department stores now. So I think now, I don't know if I, if I was a kid now and I was smelling it off my dad now with what the fragrance trend is currently, I might, it might have not left an impression on me as it did back in the 70s because the fragrances are so different now. Yes, so. yes a lot, a lot. In fact, the other day I had a, a, a chat with uh, uh, Chris from the Fragmental channel and we were discussing... Mm -hmm how perfumery has changed you know in these years from having these gorgeous powerhouses and not so you know uh let's say uh, soft perfumes uh, until now that everything has to be polite everything has to be you know like uh like everything in life you know uh, right now <laughs> Everything, it's, you know, very, has to be uh, very polite, very, how you say, uh, politically correct. And, oh my God, I hate that, you know? Where are those perfumes that they were maybe like kudos from, from, from Yves Saint Laurent that even now you smell it and it's not like it was before. And you say, no. oh my God, this thing is hard. So imagine <laughs> how it was like 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. No, that's what I grew up with. Those are the kind of stuff my dad wore. The okay. polos and the Aramises and Pierre Cardin's and just all the stuff he wore. Just really strong. Halston and uh, I'm drawing a blank with names, but many of that stuff. It's just, they're so different. It's just nothing. You can't compare them. They're just, Don't tastes worry. have changed. We've gotten, we've gotten kind of very kind of sensitive to smell People get offended with smells these days. Oh my God, you're wearing too much fragrance. It's like, <laughs> yes. deal with it. I have to smell somebody's body odor down the street. <laughs> Why can't you deal with my body odor of perfume, you know? <laughs> yes, of course, of so. course. Uh, so you told me you were from Lebanon. Um, at what age did you came to, to the United States? Nine. I was nine years old. Nine. So I was pretty young. We can say that you start your perfume collection here in the States, right? When you start yeah. to buy your perfumes with your own money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely in the 80s. I was uh, probably in my teens. Yeah, definitely in my teens, not probably. Okay. And, okay, so we are, you know, in the 80s. And when did you first start it uh, or did you find out the term niche perfumery? Well... The word niche perfumery didn't really hit me until the late 2000s, but I was already wearing niche perfumes in the 90s. Okay. My first two niche brands were Anique Guttal and Penhaligans. Okay. Not necessarily designers, not necessarily sold at the, like the big department stores like Macy's. I would never see them there. Um, they were more like Saks or something like that. Um, something a little more exclusive, but I guess I didn't hear the word niche until the 2000s. Okay. Okay. So they uh -huh. weren't really known as niche. They weren't really known as niche perfumes. They were just known as perfumes. I think Yeah. perfumery until we saw all the big niche brands like Frederick Mall, Killian, Kirk Jen, all of those okay. came forward uh, and maybe, maybe it was a term that it was more, uh, you know, um, popular in the 2000s, maybe the, 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 the so-called niche. And, um, and yeah, 
in my case, I think it's the same because for me, the first niche perfume that it's not niche, but that's why they call it like that. It was the private collection from Tom Ford. You have to understand that here in Mexico, we have a very big lag between what you have in the States and everything that you know, that you get from the brands and like maybe five, 10 years after we got them here in Mexico. So uh, when Tom Ford first arrived here, it was, you know, catalog as niche because it was the only perfumes which were, you know, very, very, very expensive and very unique. Although, you know, back in the States, they were, they were you know, labeled as, no, no, that's just premium brand, you know, the, the premium side <laughs> of a brand, that's it, you know? Yeah, I okay. get it, I get what you mean. Okay, okay, so um, you were wearing a Nibutal, which I think I have to say, I love it. For me, Nymphéo Mio, it's one of my- I love that one. Favorite, favorite perfumes, and I, I, I still have one, uh, let's say vintage one because um i have, you have seen, a bottle yeah i have the bottle yeah yeah of course Do you have the green bottle yeah <laughs> you have the green bottle yeah the, the one with the the, the, the the square label yeah yeah Do you the have ugly it? bottle you get it? <laughs> yeah <laughs> i do have mine's it. right mine's right behind me oh my god for me grab it. oh yeah <laughs> Oh my God, yeah, the same thing. I have that one and I also have the one that uh, it's, well, it was targeted for women because it's a little bit more of a round one. Yeah, but, feminine uh, bottles. So they were male bottles and feminine bottles. Yeah, the same juice, different um, bottle. And, sorry. Um, in fact, I was like really, this. Yeah, like that one. Yeah, exactly, exactly. In fact, I was reading about, uh, I think they are, or, or they, they have just recently sell a Nikutal brand or they're in the middle so, of something. A Nikutal died, I think, in the late 90s or early 2000s. And the, I think the company was struggling up until mid 2010s. No, actually, well, I think they got bought out by a more Pacific, a Korean brand. Okay. And then Korean brand decided to change the name from Anik Gutal to Gutal. That's the difference now. And let's hope they don't uh, reformulate everything, you know? <laughs> yeah, sadly, I think that they all reformulate things for us, unfortunately. And us very sensitive people to smells will notice the differences. Or maybe our noses are getting tired and we can... They're not so strong anymore, but that, that was one of the first brands for me. Wow. Yeah. For me, and you know, I, I know I love Annie Guttel. So, but okay, let's, 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 let's think about what you say. Maybe into when you first started to see niche into, in the 2000s, which was the first brand that you say, oh, this is niche perfume with this new label. Well, what happened for me was in the 90s, I burned out. I burned out with such strong fragrances. One of my favorites was Amen when it was called Angel Men. I used to wear so many sprays of that stuff and it's not the same as it used to be. Now it's like a wimp. Yeah. But I think what happened to me was I went to Joe Malone. I went light. I thought, oh, this smells like orange blossoms that you see smell on a tree. This smells like, you know, uh, fruits and this smells like fig and this smells like pomegranates and... I kind of went light. So I think that's niche. It's, it's not a designer, obviously. So I guess this, this would be my, my real niche experience after an Equital and the Penhaligans. But do I really call it niche? Does it really, I mean. It's from Steve Lauder. Yeah. It's Estee Lauder. It's a, yeah. I mean, as Joe Malone sold it to Estee Lauder, uh, but in the mid nineties, uh, late nineties, uh, they were independent. So I, I mean, I don't know. Is there really niche anymore? The, the question. It's the, don't jump ahead of yourself because I have a, a very specific question about that to you uh -huh. later on. But yeah. Okay. I won't jump. <laughs> okay. So well, uh, let's move on. Um, okay. I have a, a must-ask question. If you have some there, everybody, you know, 
I don't know if you have all, uh, one day counted all the perfumes that you have. Can you have a, an estimate? Yeah. Um, it is such a difficult question. I get asked this question every time I do a live. It's like somewhere between 2,750 to 3,250. Oh my God. It's, 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 it's uh, a lot. And it doesn't <laughs> stop either. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you look in this room, I have it in an angle where, you know, because of the pandemic, I haven't had time to clean here because this is outside of my house. I have to walk here 15 minutes. So I hang out here as little as I can and then go back home because I don't want to be out. So it used to be a lot cleaner. Now it's a mess. Bottles everywhere. I don't have time to organize. I don't have time to throw things away. So I've got the... I got this in a certain way that you can't see any of the mess. So if you, if I turned it around, it's a mess. I'm hiding it as much as I can. <laughs> but yeah, I think the number is somewhere around 2750 to 3250. It's probably around 3000. Wow. Wow. Oh my God. Now, uh, I, I think no, that's not all fragrances. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's not all fragrances that I was sent. I do buy a lot. Yeah. I buy a lot. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's that that's great. Okay. Um now this is like a personal question. Um okay, you were starting, you know, collecting your parents taught you about, you know, perfumes and you were, you know, in love with them. In in which part of your life or in your journey you said, you know, I think I'm going to, you know, I'm gonna dedicate my life into perfumes. I'm going to do a channel and I don't know if this is your your only job or do you have like a day-to-day -day job, but um, I, I would really like to know which was the tipping point between saying, I'm just a perfume collector and I want to make something out of my perfume collection. So I started doing this in 2012 okay. after watching Al and Robes and a couple of other guys that no longer sh you know do the videos. I'm on my second channel. My first channel is no longer. So I've been doing it for almost 10 years. Uh, I have a lot of experience. I first started doing this. I didn't know where, where I was going. I'd get criticized on, oh, well, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to say that. Thankfully, that channel is no longer. It was removed. Okay. But, you know, I've, I restarted in 2015. I've gotten better and better. And uh, I actually recently trademarked a perfume guy. I do want to make a business out of this uh, because I've dedicated so much time. I mean, I've got like 1200 plus videos on YouTube. Plus I did about 600 videos on the old channel. So I've got around, I've made around two, 2000 videos in, in my lifetime doing this. So, so I thought, you know what, I got to make some money from this doing something, but I haven't really thought about it. I do have a full-time job. No, I have thought about it. I have, I have been doing some consulting. I have some clients. I used to come into the studio and I'd let them smell fragrances because, you know, I'd have friends come here. They go, oh, my God, I don't need to go to a perfume shop because I can smell things that nobody even sells here. I mean, even the perfume shops here wouldn't have some of the stuff you have. So, so I mean, I kind of tried to make that with this place. But now that we, we can't really have people around, it's been quieter. I've been doing some Zoom client things. Uh, I've had some client um, consulting things but basically i was starting a consultancy so people can come in and smell things uh that um they wouldn't have access to so yeah, yeah i did i do want to make something i do something with it to make a little money out of it because you know i have access to so much but i haven't really thought about what yet okay. starting new t-shirts as you can see i have a t-shirt hanging up starting doing uh t-shirts based on notes so i have a forever vetiver i have an ambergris alert t-shirt Uh, three more are launching soon. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Oh, everything is possible in the, in, in the, in the future. I will have to get one of those. I, <laughs> <laughs> I normally, I almost everybody, every day I use, you know, a black t-shirt. So yeah, now I, I'm seeing it. I think I'm going to love it. <laughs> yeah, they're fun. Um, we're trying to make, uh, I'm trying to come up with like quirky um, expressions with notes. So we've had some, I mean, yeah, there's three more that are going to launch very soon, but uh, we've got ideas for like 20 different t-shirts. So little by little. Perfect. Perfect, my friend. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yeah, I think for a long way. <laughs> no, no, it, it's been a long way and there's still a lot of road ahead of you. And maybe when you when you have more more, you know, of uh, what you want to do of the perfume guy, I think that's going to be your 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 brand or I don't know. Uh, obviously, we will have to have another call and you will let us know what you're going to do. But I, I have to say that maybe, well, no, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. But um, well, so uh, why don't we jump into what, what I would say the main part of the call. So um, okay. a lot of the questions and uh, that I got, it's like, um, Eduardo, what have you smelled or buy? In the, past, in the past couple of maybe six months that you are amazed and that, you know, it's, uh, it's something that you have to try. And I was like, okay, you know, with all the pandemics and things like that, obviously I haven't been able to discover as much as I would like, but um, obviously the first thing, uh, the, the first person I think about, it was you because <laughs> you, are always you know in the in the in the front end of uh, what it's coming a lot of the brands uh, reach out to you a lot of the brands that you know you 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 travel a lot so you get to know them so i would really like to you know pick pick your brain and and maybe ask what have you tried in the last let's say six eight months if, if, if you don't want to consider the, the COVID, that you say you know this is one of the perfumes that it has blown my mind. Obviously, it doesn't have to be your best perfume, but it's something that, you know, it's worth your while. So uh, I think that's very interesting. It's a tough thing to blow my mind these days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I've smelled so much stuff. Does anything blow my mind anymore? Um, no. Okay. It's okay. really, really I, tough. Maybe, but there I, are... There are good fragrances out there that are really yeah. that are smelling great. There okay. are great stuff. Don't yeah. don't. Let let's let's that bring like it that. out. Uh, it's not it's not what okay maybe it di it didn't blow your mind but you know you said it's uh it you know it, it stands out from the rest of the launches or brands or you know things. So you want to know some? Yes. <laughs> so did you try Bohemian Lime from Goldfield and Banks? I haven't yet, but uh, it, looks, it looks amazing. It, for me, see, this is a very unique thing because I've never smelled a fragrance that features finger lime. Do you even know what finger lime is? No. It's native to Australia. It's a weird looking lime fruit. Inside it has like little caviar, like a little piece of caviar. Look it up. It's weird. Okay. So for me, the fragrance smells kind of citrusy, like you're smelling moscow mule you know the cocktail moscow mule yes it's very it smells like ginger to me so it's a nice it's a nice release i really love it uh i mean is it groundbreaking no but it's a great great scent Perfect. that's definitely one that i should uh mention other than that i mean it's i smell so much stuff i always forget what i'm smelling that's the only problem but <laughs> i recently picked up i mean it's a problem because i, I can't keep it all in my mind but recently, I picked up the new uh, Louis Vuitton, the, the uh, Nuit de Faux, the, the incense. Okay. Uh, it's pretty solid release. I wasn't really happy with the uh, California Dream. Uh, there's a fragrance from a house called L'Orchestre Parfums. Do you know this one? Uh, oh, yeah. The, the one that, that blends music with perfumes? Mm hmm Yeah. So their Piano Santal is great. Okay. Uh, I really love that sandalwood. Um, it's very milky. It's creamy. There's a house called The Harmonist. Do you know The Harmonist? Yeah, the one with the black and, and white bottles. Like, they look like... Yeah, yin and yang bottles. Their new one, Moon Glory, is great. It's powdery. It's a floral. Okay. Um, there's so much out there. It's just trying to remember everything. What do <laughs> I have on this side? <laughs> Oh, the latest, the latest from Atelier des Ors, uh, Rouge Sarre, really, really good, really, really good um, Oriental. Okay. See, the Orientals are my favorite styles of perfumery. I like the warmth. I like the spices. I like the vanilla, the resins, and the, all that kind of stuff. So this fragrance smells phenomenal. I, I really love it. It's vanillic. 
it kind of reminds me of maybe like a new take on Shalimar. Oh my God. So, so, so those are what's vanilla. Yeah. Very vanillic, very resinous. Maybe there's some Tonka beans in there too. Okay. Um, you know, B was really good from zoologist. Okay. I wasn't a fan there, but yeah. So it's a you, sweet one. I don't know if you have tried the, I think it's called Sloth from a zoologist that has chamomile yeah. and lavender. Mm -hmm. Curiously enough, I was, uh, you know, when I, when I read chamomile and honey, I was like, what? And I tried it. I, I only have a sample. And, you know, I was really amazed with that one. Uh, unlike B, mm -mm, this kind of animalic honey, uh, no, it, it wasn't of my, uh, it's not. It my wasn't favorite. yours. Okay. Yeah. Because that's my favorite zoologist. Oh, really? <laughs> I love, I love, yeah, I love honey. And oh I love, I love sweet okay. fragrances. So, I mean, I have, the thing for me is when I'm wearing fragrances, do I want to be challenged or do I want to smell great? Sometimes I like to be challenged, but when I'm being challenged with fragrances, do I smell great being challenged? So, yeah, yeah. B is totally wearable. I mean, I love it. It's sweet. It smells like honey cakes and pastries and things like that. Okay. Um, another brand that I think definitely is worth noticing or noting out or uh, discovering, if you guys don't know, is Rogue Perfumery. Do you know Rogue Perfumery? No. Rogue is great. They have a fragrance called the uh, Mousse Illumine. Okay. It's an indie brand from California. They are sold at Lucky Scent. I've spoken about them a lot. Um, I think Mousse Illumine is a couple of years old, but they're always releasing new fragrances. It's a great house to discover. It's indie niche. Uh, they're not overly expensive. They're not, I mean, cheap either. So, um, 30 ml bottles or 50 ml bottles. No, I think 30 ml bottles. I'm looking at the bottles. They're around $110. So, but really, really, like really quality stuff. I think they use real oak moss. So oh. they're not IFRA compliant because they don't yeah. sell in Europe. Yeah, yeah. So that's great. That's great. Um, so those are some stuff. And, and they're from California, you say? Yeah, Southern California. Okay. Definitely. Rogue Perfumery is great. I love their brand I and their bottles look like kind of vintage looking um, perfume bottles, but they don't look like overly um, designed bottles because they're simple bottles, but their labels are very designed and kind of art deco looking. So really nice. I like, I like the packaging. Okay. Okay. But, but you know, it's very good for me to, uh, to, to, to find out about this perfume house because I didn't know, you know, from the States, obviously, you know, you have, um, imaginary offers. I, I, I knew, uh, the one that made kerosene and, um, but no, I haven't, I haven't, uh, tried this one. And I think there are a lot of brands just like breweries. <laughs> They're starting to emerge in the States and, uh, that's something great, you know? Um, we, Northern California, we, where I'm at, uh, it has a lot of indie perfume brands. Perfect. A, a lot of them are very, very small time, but they're kind of slowly uh, becoming like Bruno Fazolari is from here in uh, San Francisco. Okay. He's probably the best known out of the indies from here. Okay. Um, I don't know what else do I what else I should mention. I'm looking at my collection. It's always <laughs> I forget. That's different. Um, mm, you know, I'm really, really loving um, uh, Rosendo Matu. I don't know. You probably saw them at Sans last year. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that brand is great. You know, another brand that should definitely be highlighted is Atelier Materi. Do you know this brand? No. Atelier Materi, I saw them last year in the south of France. They have a fragrance called Peau de Ambrette, a great amber, no, a great fragrance featuring ambrette seeds. Do you know this brand, this note? Ambrette? Yes. yes. Um, another one is their cacao. They have a chocolatey um, fragrance with cacao called uh, Cacao um, Porcelana. I think that's what it's called. 
Sounds interesting. But it's, a, it's another brand that I've discovered that I really enjoy. I'm looking back here to see what else is back here, but they're all pretty <laughs> uh, well-known brands, Creed and stuff. Um, yeah, that's it. That's about it, I think. Ah, well, don't worry, don't worry. And now, now that you mentioned Creed, I would, I really like to ask you what, what are your thoughts? And now that it has been, you know, sold to BlackRock. Um, I have who my own it? opinion, but uh, who bought it? Did you say BlackRock? Yeah, BlackRock. What? The the hedge What's fund. What's BlackRock? Sorry. Oh, so it's a hedge fund that bought it. Yes. Yeah, I thought they're... it was a a Spanish businessman or something, or lawyer or something. I don't know what no, I heard. It, well, the hedge fund it's called BlackRock, and they are from uh, the Diego company, which they sell the the most of the liquors. And yeah, they have uh, offices in Spain, but no, mm. it's a hedge fund. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, one question and they have asked me, but I have a very, very particular opinion about it, but I, I wanted to, to ask you first, um, what are your thoughts into this? Do you think they're going to change this, this kind of, you know, being a family owned uh, company until or now that you, you have to meet certain, you know, in fact, certain, you know, financial points and you will be scrutinized in your processes and things like that. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you think it's, it's going to be a, a tipping point for something better or something worse? I don't think it'll get better. Okay. So it's been in the family for all this time. Um, it's not their baby. Whoever bought it is not their baby. So if it's not your baby, do you take good care of it? No. So I don't know. I mean, my, my opinion is I don't think they're going to, I don't know. I just, it doesn't look like it's going to be, um, because is it an investment? And, or is it like something you really want? Do you really love this um, idea of having a perfume brand by the name of Creed? Or you just wanted it because it looks great on your portfolio of brands that you, you have. So I, I don't think it's going to be as good. I hope it doesn't go down in uh, quality, but you, don't, you never know. I don't know. You know but that's my theory is that I don't think it's going to be something like Oh my God, it's Creed. I love it. I want to take, you know, do a lot with it. Uh, now, obviously I don't know the details of the business, but uh, maybe they have kept, you know, uh, the uh, Air, Airwing Creed on the, on the head of the, I don't know. I, that's just speculation. But, I, heard, um, I heard they were going to be kept oh. on, but I, I, to what extent, I don't know. So, uh, well, you know, for me, I, I took the other, the other way around. I thought, you know, it was a very good movement because unfortunately, for in my, in my, in my own experience, I have, uh, you know, suffered from variances in the, in, the, in the quality of perfumes over time. And uh, that's just something that uh, for me, it's not, it's not well, well received. I know when you're doing something, let's say more artisanal, or if you're buying a certain vintage of, uh, of the wines, well, it's expected, but not if you're paying uh, more than $300 for a perfume. And I have to, you know, this is one of the, 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 the things that I can vouch for. Um, I still remember my 2012 Aventus, which was, I think one of the perfumes that led me into, into buying perfumes and into falling in love with niche perfumes and investing my money. And uh, in 2016, my wife gave me uh, my present for my, you know, my, my birthday, a big bottle of Aventus. And uh, I was very disappointed. I was very, very, very disappointed because oh. um, I find a very weak juice, you know, uh, if I would give you to uh, maybe, you know, if you compare it with <laughs> Club de Nuit or, you know, garbage like that, you know, they outperform it. And I was like, and, and, and I'm not just talking about performance. It was, um, 
maybe I just got a very, very, very bad batch and I bought it in a Saks Fifth Avenue. So it wasn't, you know, like something uh, of counterfeit or something like that. So I was very disappointed. And I have to say that mm. one of my, my favorite perfumes all time, it was my, my wedding scent. Uh, it was Granite Street. And I, I still have my bottle and I love it, you know, and I, I don't give a sample to anybody because I'm afraid that it's going to run out and I don't know what I'm going to find out in a new bottle. So um, for me, being part of a hedge fund, I think they will have to comply with providers, um, very, very rigorous uh, uh, processes in the, in the process of creating the perfumes. Yeah. I think they will structure more the, 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 the production part of the business and not just saying, well, maybe, maybe Erwin, it wasn't as good as his father, you know, <sighs> now in this global world, that doesn't, that, that doesn't fly. If, if you're not up to the job, leave. So for me, that's the only good part, but uh, I think I'm, mm. I'm just the, the, the tiny majority that thinks like that. Well, everybody has their opinions. We'll see what happens. But from my experience, it doesn't sound like it's going to be a good idea, but I, I'm, I'm going to wait to see. Yeah. Um, and you know, we, obviously we have, we have experiences with L'Oreal. We have experiences with the Steel Lauder buying perfume uh, brands. But I think this is different because uh, given that Diego uh, specializes in distributing liquors, I think they will have to honor, like they have done it with, you know, every kind of liquors that they sell that they, mm -hmm. they are still, you making. might be right there. So I don't you know. Might be right there. I like people that know good, good uh, whiskey and uh, brandy and uh, cognac and things like that probably yeah. will appreciate expensive perfumes also. So maybe they, they might, they're maybe they might be uh, into the idea of keeping it and making it better. We'll see. Well, I don't know what else to say, but hopefully they'll relaunch Royal English leather so I can buy a bottle. <laughs> Uh, I, I never got to uh, to 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 test that one. Yeah. Oh God, it's so good! It's a great. It's probably the best Creed fragrance next to Windsor. Okay, yeah. I also didn't. I didn't smell Windsor. I, uh, is it Windsor uh, later recalled uh, Royal Mayfair, or, or or they are different? They're similar, but still, you can smell the difference. It's uh, Windsor is a little better than uh, Royal Mayfair. Okay. Um, I have about 40 mils of a 50 mil um i bought it as a promotion in a um atomizer like they sold it in their atomizer for me it was 450 dollars. probably when i bought it in 2013 it was the most expensive thing i bought but i have that and somebody gave me a decant of uh royal english leather so i have a little bit of it and i would love full bottles of those so we'll see we'll see what happens Wow. Probably those are the best fragrances for me from Creed next to Royal Oud. Royal Oud is great. It's probably my favorite regular lineup of fragrances from Creed. I also like the geranium and the vetiver. Okay. So, so those what are my favorite. You, what do you think about uh, Bois from Portugal? You know, it's classic. I love it. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's classic. Okay. Frank Sinatra wore it apparently. I don't know how true that is, but <laughs> we will believe it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, last question of these current uh, trends. And I, I want to pick your brain because I know that you have more access and you can give us a little bit of a light into this. Uh, with the, the whole creative uh, di direction change into Amwash, um, where do you think or theorize, or maybe you can give us a little bit, um, where is it going to go? Do you think, um, well, no, let, let me hear you. <laughs> what do I think? Um, you know, all brands go through something like this. So a lot of people are, you know, I've read, I've read things like, oh, well, uh, they had a good, why did they get rid of the creative director? I don't know if that's, I don't know what the story is behind. I don't know if it was a mutual thing. I don't know what happened to the previous creative director, I guess just, Brands kind of get tired of, uh, you know, their creative team and they have to come up with something fresh. Maybe they're 
their uh, fragrances were becoming a little too repetitive. They were too similar. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I think change is always good because if I didn't have changes in my life, I would never be at the place I am today. So change is always good. Um, and I think all brands need a change. They get rid of their old team and come up with new because they need new ideas, a new direction and all that kind of stuff. I guess it's sort of also similar to what's going on with Crete. We just have to wait and see what, what's, what's going to happen. Now I do have their uh, first release, which was the Iris, um, uh, the uh, interlude man, you know, what did you think about for it? me, it was, it was mostly inter interlude man with iris so if you like interlude man as it is then you're fine with interlude man if you want that iris touch get a sample and check it out because you'll probably like it just think of an interlude man with iris powdery so it's powdery to take okay now is it a solid release i think it's just a flanker because i did a live with a perfumer over at Amouage with Pierre Negrin, who created both Interlude and Interlude Man. I think he's a great perfumer. I love his Portrayal Man, his Sunshine Man, uh, Journey Man, and, and of course, Interlude Man. Uh, I think what they were doing is, because it's such a popular fragrance for Amouage, I think it's their mo number one seller, Interlude. Um, they just wanted to create a flanker and uh, to start this new uh, time in their um, uh, you know journey. And, with Amouage, with a direction of uh, the new team. So I can only wait to see what they're going to come up with next. Okay. But uh, I, 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 I was able to get a, a sample of it and I really enjoy it. But as you say, you have to like interlude. Uh, for me, it was a tamer kind of interlude. Um, softer with obviously with this kind of uh, iris but i really love the the the, 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 the aspect of the iris because at, at the beginning you know it's it smells i don't know it, it was very curious i there, there are some candies that, that they sell here in mexico that they are purple and obviously they have iris so mm -hmm. the, the the taste of those candies is the one that i picked up in interlude iris and uh my conclusion was, if you want a maybe refiner, softer, more office-friendly kind of uh, interlude, then go with the Iris one. For me, it was like the, the French cousin, and the, the, the original one was the more of a countryside kind of cousin, you know, rough and, you know, uh, loud. And, uh, but that, that was my, my impression of it. Uh, but like you said, it was just a flanker. Yeah, I think a way to put it for me would be elegant versus rugged. Yep, exactly. But you know, I've had issues come up on my channel about this interlude, man. I mean, the original. At one point, I thought it was a really, really strong fragrance. But for me, uh, everybody says it's, a, it's the blue beast. It's like, it's not really a beast. Do you consider it a beast? Well, interlude is not a beast. <laughs> I've, I mean, I have so much access to fragrances compare interlude man to other fragrances that are real beasts it doesn't even compare and people call it like the most longest lasting fragrance i no, don't know that's not i don't get that that's part not true. no it's uh, not a beast to me <laughs> okay which one would you call a beast like you say well give me two three examples because with your collection, maybe you're going to tell me something that nobody knows it, but... Uh... No, I mean, one of the most strongest fragrances for me is Cocaine from Frank Boclet. Oh, yeah. that, thing sticks, that thing sticks on you and it doesn't yeah. remove itself like for days. <laughs> I mean, even something, like, even something like Dior Leather Oud. I know it's a, it's a designer, but that fragrance doesn't wash off. And it's something that I don't want clinging on me because sometimes it could smell nasty on me because it's all like synthetic uh, civet smell. But there, are, there are fragrances, huh? I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's good. And we're one of the few guys that really, really, really enjoys leather root. Mm. Oh, you know God. what? It's funny. When I first got that fragrance, I really loved it. But you know, my taste is changing all the time. That's Whereas right. I used to love civet, now I'm not really loving civet, but now I'm really loving musk. I really mm -hmm. love musk. So, I don't know, has that happened to you? 
Yes. Is your yes. Yeah, yeah. All, all, all the time, and, and in, in not only in perfumery, it, it also happens with the things that I drink. Um, some years I'm more of a whiskey guy. Some years I'm are, are, I'm more of a rum kind of guy. Um, I, I used to smoke like six years ago and I also changed brands it, it, you know I think that there's a, pa a pattern there you know with people that collect pers perfumes because I don't know if you if, if you relate to this but um, I hate to be labeled with just one thing and I want to know what's out there and just as with uh, as with clothes I, I want to say okay today I want to be very animalic very dirty but maybe tomorrow I want to be clean so Please don't tie me up with that. You know, I, I was struggling getting married. You know? <laughs> <laughs> don't do that with my perfumes. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very against, you know, uh, the, the, the signature perfume kind of uh, mentality or set of mind. For me, it's just like saying, why, if you are living in a, in a beautiful world, do you always want to eat the same thing from the same restaurant with the same person? <laughs> Oh my God, it, 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 it doesn't commute with me. But anyway, um, yes, it, it, has, it, it has happened to me. And I think it happens for, for months to months. Sometimes I have more of a sweet tooth. So I, I gravitate onto the, onto the gourmand part of the perfumes. And then mm. I say like, Ugh, what I was thinking. And, and I have some perfumes <laughs> there that now I, I smell them and I was like, why? I was high or this is horrible. And then I go to the other extreme. Um, you know, talking about, talking about musk, I, I, I wanted to ask you because I, I tried it last week, uh, maybe in the States and you already know him, but um, for me, it was something new. Uh, the, this new perfumer, um, Aaron uh, Terrence Hughes, that um i haven't tried any of his fragrances okay he has one which is called slot and i was like uh, that's going to be very animalic and no i think it's a it's a it's a worth you know a game or whatever because it's very clean and it it's so 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 clean it's soapy 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 musky 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 but I think wow. you, I, I, I would really like you to try it because um, obviously it's not a natural, organic kind of uh, musk, but it's not a white musk. It's like an animalic <laughs> musk, but when you smell um, organic or natural musk, in my mind, the, the, the smell curvature goes like this. It's from uh, clean, it starts clean, and after a while, it goes animalic, you know, like mm. more of a... Okay. So for me, that's the way when, when, when I smell a perfume that has real uh, musk, that's, that's the graph that my, my, my mind oh. picks up. It's, it starts okay. clean and then it goes animalic. Mm. And what I really enjoyed about what Aaron did, maybe I'm just guessing, I don't know, for me, it started, it smells like a real uh, musk. So it yeah. starts soapy, clean, but just when it's going to start to smell funky or animalic, like a lot of the perfumes that you can smell with or a uh, real musk, I don't know how he cut it and, 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 it, and it fades out. So what you wow. left out. It's, Interesting. Yeah, it's a very clean, clean, I, I was like, you, you, you can't over apply it because you know your 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 nose it can be you know it, it can itch your nose your nose it's very strong but in the heart it has like um, white flowers and uh, something that I just can't pinpoint as metallic wood or something like that so you know I, Ooh. I, I don't know if it's going to be something that everybody likes it but what I can tell you it it surprised me a little bit because lately I have read about a lot of newcomer perfumers and hipsters that do perfumes and things like that. So I was like, mm, 
I'm not that sure that all this hype, it's, you know, too so hype. this perfume and it's the only one that I have tried. And I was like, oh my God, I think I have to try other things because that one, maybe, I don't know if you're going to like it or not, but what I can guarantee you is you, it's going to be something that you're going to say, what the hell is this? <laughs> and for me, that's something that I, I really uh, seek into perfumery because now all the releases I smell them and it's like oh, I have already smelled this I hate that but anyway that's just me <laughs> this, that's you know I was when I was at Exxon's last year I said that to myself so many times I was thinking god these brands need to hire people like us yeah. to tell them this is already out there don't do this Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, well, last question and we can wrap things up. Do, uh, do you have time? Yeah. Perfect. Let me go to my next page. <laughs> oh, no, this is off script, but uh, it's, it's oh, wait, about perfumes. Still, uh, so are we still on Creed? No, we're going to go oh, into Creed. Andy Tower. Okay. Have you tried the new... Uh, uh, Philotel Blue or Philotel Blue. I don't know how, how is it called. The new launch from him. I have. What it's did you not think? for me. It's not for me. me too. So most people know I'm not into aquatic fragrances okay. and this is an overdose of seaweed or something. Yeah. I love Towers perfume. In fact, I was thinking of reviewing some of the stuff that I had reviewed on my old channel that I don't have on my current channel because I just bought some bottles of his new fragrances because I was out. And I got the sample of the new one and I was like, oh no, this is not for me. I don't like aquatic fragrances whatsoever. Okay. And in this one, it's such an overdose of that seaweed note. It's like, no. Anyway. <laughs> you know, and it's very funny and maybe I'm crazy, but uh, to me, more of a, of, a, of a blue scent, if I would have to pick a color, it would be green. For me, it was a very... You know, maybe you know this perfume. Uh, I don't know if I have a few yet. It was, for me, it smelled a little bit like Nebbia Spesa from uh, Filippo Sorsinelli, which is mm. green, oceanic, salty, but, but I don't know if you have ever eat uh, like a green clover, uh, the, the kind of chlorophylla that you get there, you get here. And I also get it in the Andy Tower one. But like you said, no, it wasn't for me. So, yeah. Do you generally like aquatics? No, no, no. It's my uh, least kind of uh, favorite perfume. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It, I it, guess we have something in common. Well, we have something in common here too. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I can say you, it's one of my favorites. I just love the way how this green fig, humid, uh, humid, I don't know how you say it. It uh, smells like sand too. Oh, Do you I get the sand? Sand? Yeah, oh yeah like no. uh, sandy beach. Oh, beach. Okay. Oh, oh no. The sand. I, I, I went into a more of a dry kind of uh, thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. A little bit sandy. Uh, I don't know. I, but, I, I just love it. That's why yeah. uh, when, when people told me you have to pick 10, maybe 15, I hate that question, but most of the times I pick uh, an Infomio from a Nigutel in my top 10 because it's something that I just love. It's, um, it's amazing. It's amazing yeah. for me. It's one of the best green perfumes out there because it's loud, very loud. It, 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 and it's not something that you find in green perfume. So um, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, um, Perfect. So now uh, let me see. We have two more questions. I don't know. Uh, we can do it very quickly. But uh, okay. Uh, thinking about your whole collection, you have a lot of perfumes, and also your job is to try new perfumes. So um, it's very difficult for you to try, you know, using the perfumes that you really love. Because if you spend the day using the perfume that you love, you waste it trying a new perfume. So you know. You have to do this. Um, what are the perfumes, and maybe you can tell me two or three, that you always gravitate to it? You know, like, 
it, it maybe it can be a perfume from 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, but it's, it's a very recurring perfume in your rotation. Um, for me, perfumes have to make me feel good. Okay. That's important. Um, in the end, it's a long day. Um, I'm, I'm exhausted. When I come home, I've showered. I want to put on something that will relax me. Usually vanillas. I'm wearing a lot of, you know, orientals, vanillas, and patchoulis. And on top of those, I wear a lot of citruses. So those are what really call me. Um, I wear them all the time. But the thing with me is I wear one for one hour, two hours, and I'm moving on to the next one. So I'm not wearing something for a full day. Only when I'm testing, I do that. But other than that, I'm like rotating so much that um, I am wearing a lot. Okay. Like probably a good reason why people shouldn't come close to me because I wear like 100 mil bottles every day. <laughs> but you I'm apply it over the, where, where, where the other perfume is drying down? Or do you pick No, up? no, no, no. I look, at, I look for different sections of my body. <laughs> yeah, I do the same. I do the same. But yeah. You know, I hate it because um, you only have, for me, there are only four portions. Maybe this one, this one, this one, and this one. And after yeah. that, you can try anything else because... <laughs> well, we have one, two, three, four, five fingers. One, two, three, four, five fingers. So 10 fingers total. Oh, you try it on your fingers. That's, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, that's a great tweet. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so yeah. uh, last question. And... Um, what do you think about all these uh, kind of uh, YouTuber perfumes? What do I think about YouTubers? Who's, who's perfumes? Uh, for me, the, they felt The YouTubers out. making brands? Yeah. So early on, I said to myself, I knew this was coming. Um, don't review any YouTubers perfumes. Okay. I, and I understand. So I haven't. Want to, yeah, but the only one I've smelled is Office for Men from Jeremy, and that is it. Because Jeremy gave me a bottle at uh, Scent Explore, and I was like, "Okay, I'll take it." He <laughs> said, "You don't have to put it in. You don't have to review it or anything." I'm like, "Okay," but I haven't smelled any other YouTubers' fragrances. Okay. And what do I think? I think if they're, if that's what they want to do. That they should totally be able to do it. Um, I just told myself I'm not going to review them because I don't want to like, I don't want, I guess I don't want to like brag about somebody's perfumes or not brag about them. I kind of feel weird about it. So I just thought, you know what? I'm not going to review them. I might smell them, but uh, there have been some people that came to me that said, you know what? This guy's perfume is great. You should check it out. I said, you know what, maybe I'll check it out and give you my opinion behind the scenes, but I'm not going to share it with the world. So I just made that decision right off the bat because I know other people are probably going to launch. I'm yeah. sure other YouTubers will launch. Are you going to launch? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, in fact, you know, it, it was a, it's, it's, a, it's a funny question because in, uh, and I, I'm, ask, I, I'm asking you this question because uh, you know essential performs from... Uh, we met them and, uh, at Exense, Essential Perfums. The $100 bottles, 100 ml? Yeah, they have like a Magnetic Rose. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've they, been wearing uh, Magnetic Rose a lot lately. That's one I of the ones I've been wearing. Magnetic Rose. For me, <laughs> this kind of aquatic, ozonic, very metallic kind of rose, it's the kind of rose that I love. I know yeah. it's a sacrilege to say it, but I'm not this kind of portrait of a lady kind of rose. Uh, oh. No, yeah, I don't like it. I love them both, actually. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's very, it's very weird for a perfume lover to say that about true, you know, classic rose. Uh, I just get so very bad associations with those, so uh, I just can't. Mm. But anyway, the, um, the brand asks us, if you were thinking about launching your perfume, this is just a theory, what, what, what would you make? Would you make uh, something oriental? Would you make something more very niche out there? This is just for me. Or would you make something more uh, mainstream? This, all these kind of questions, what, what would you say? 
So it depends. Do I, am I doing this as something I want to create just yeah. for something like, that I like? Yeah. Like you are, the, you are the, the, the creative director of your perfume. You have uh, a carta blanche. So that, that's, that's, that's exactly it. But uh, as I'm saying to myself, like if I'm going to make this for something that I really want and I don't care who smells it, who loves it, who hates it, I would go way out there. But if I was making something to be a hit, to be popular, to be successful, um, I would go in the direction of an Oriental, appeal to the Middle Easterners who love their big fragrances. Okay. I love Oriental fragrances myself. I am Middle Eastern born. So it would have to be something that first I want to wear. <laughs> That's, I have to satisfy myself. And I'm a pretty critical person. So if, I, if it gets past me, then uh, I'm happy with it. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you know, the Oriental is the direction I would go in. Uh, vanilla, resins, maybe some incense, um, maybe throw in some patchouli, vanilla, all of that stuff. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, you know, I love, I love Oriental soup. But, uh, but it's funny how you put it because... Um, if I'm reading it correctly, you're saying if I'm very, I'm totally free to do it. You wouldn't do an Oriental. You would go into another place, very different. No, um, the thing is, I have a business mentality. So, if I want to get really creative, I would go into a very creative direction. But probably people are not going to like it. But I, I want to pick that part of your brain. Mm -hmm. what, what would you think? Maybe you're the only, or maybe three people will love your perfume. I don't care about that. What would you put out there? You know, like which notes or we, we, what kind of perfume would it be? Would, be, would it be strong, soft, um, for summer, so for, for winter? I think it would be just an out there fragrance. I'm thinking that the first thing that comes to mind is Secretions Magnifique. It's just so out there. It's there, it's made, but is it made to sell or is it made for people to talk about? It's mostly for people to talk about and gets people to talk about the brand. So that's the kind of fragrance I would do. I would do, I, I, I'm not saying I would do it exactly like that, but something in that style, weird, that just gets people talking. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah. That's that great. would not be selling. It's just mainly for talking. <laughs> yeah. But, well, it, it, it played out perfectly for Etat Libre de Vange for uh, just Secretion Magnifique put them on the spot mind of everybody in the world. So, yeah, you know, uh, if, if we have to give an award for a marketing strategy to anybody, it's to Etienne because, you know, chapeau. Doing that, it was just great. Um, doing an ugly perfume, just put out at that in the top of mind of everybody. And I, I just did like uh, a video like two weeks ago talking about my three favorites from that uh, from the French house that I love. And you know, I got a lot of comments saying, "And uh, are those perfumes also smell like you know blood and semen?" And I was like. No, man. <laughs> no. From, from their 38 perfumes, the only one that it's very, very weird, it's that one. The yeah. other ones, in fact, most of the half are very common. So Very wearable. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it was, uh, it was uh, a uh, two-edged sword because it was a very great strategy to put them, to put the, the, the brand name in... in, in in the mouth of everybody, but also maybe it also made people think that all of their compositions, all of their perfumes were that kind of, you know, out there. So I don't know. But you know, in the beginning, they did have some really weird names for perfumes. I think they redid them. Okay. I don't know if you've ever saw, saw them. Uh, well, I, I, some, I, of them, I, some, of them, some of them were even a little on the naughty side and maybe a little not PC <laughs> in the current environment. <laughs> I will say I'm off camera because I don't think, uh, no. <laughs> if you've been following, if you've been following the brand, you would know that they had some uh, 
interesting names for some fragrances. Yeah. But this was way early, like 2011, 2010, late 2000s, when they were yeah. first launching. Have you been to their store in Paris? No, I haven't. I haven't. It, it's it's like a perfume. Movies. It's like a perfume porn shop. <laughs> Oh my God. I, I just love the way they, 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 they do things and the marketing they have. And I really enjoy most of their perfumes. Most. Um, the only time I tried Secretion Magnifique, uh, yeah, I, I have to say that I, uh, it just made me gag. And no, uh, it wasn't for me. You know, it, it was a very, very horrible experience. But um, have you smelled the afternoon of a fawn? No. Great scent. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I've got, I've actually got a live happening in a couple of weeks with Etienne. So I got to come up with some questions for him. Oh, I will bring up secretions magnifique for sure. <laughs> well, it would be, it would be, I, I'm not going to miss out that program. So anyway, Sebastian. He's a good guy. Uh, sorry. I said, he's a good guy. I, I haven't met him, uh, you know, personally, but, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I really like what he have done. And I think that I, if, if I would have a brand, I would have gone more in that kind of uh, edgy marketing strategy and also, you know, uh, compositions. Um, but um, it's edgy and quirky at the same time. Yeah. Like very kitsch. like kitschy. Yeah. Very playful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, that's great, my friend. Well, um, I don't want to take more of your time. You know, uh, I could be here like two more hours talking at the <laughs> of your time. Obviously, I will have, eventually, one day I will have to go into that shop of yours or store or studio or whatever you want to call it. Hopefully, it'll be cleaner. <laughs> and I would really love a consultation from you and... Um, so uh, once that you have uh, more of a clear mind of what, where are you going to go with your project, it would be great to have you back. Uh, I think okay. my, my followers would love to, to, to see what are you going because uh, I would have to say that um, amongst the, perfume, the, the, the YouTuber or perfume reviewers, I really appreciate what you do. Um, and this is not just because I'm, you know, talking with you. Uh, I Thank you. Every time that I want to check about a new perfume, I would have to say that the first people that I, I, I check on, if he has a review, it's with you. And then I go with Steven. The, the, you, you both have a very different approach, but, you know, they let you know what the perfume are. Mm -hmm. and, but just in the right amount without saying, buy this, buy this, don't buy this. It's just, this is it, you know? And <laughs> I love it because yeah. that's just the, 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 the thing that I love about perfume reviewery, which is just a point of view and you have to pick up your mind, but if you, if you need just a guidance, you do it perfectly. So, well, I, thank I, you. I, I like that. I like that part because I don't want to tell somebody to buy something but you come to my channel mostly to find out about it and how my experience is yeah. later you buy yourself a sample or check it out in a store and uh, see if you like it. Cause yeah. you might not like what I like. Cause I like strange things sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It seems like you and I share similar interests in fragrances, except you don't like portrait of a lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I know. In fact, not just port of a lady, every perfume with this kind of, old old school very middle eastern kind of rose uh, uh, not for you I, I would have to go with a therapist or something i may be uh, something happened with me with that i don't know i don't know but i just have this kind of uh um bad association but with like do you like rose i like rose but i like it more when it goes into this kind of peppery, more of a watery kind of rose, like you said, in, 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 in Magnetic Rose. Um, mm. a declaration of a soir from uh, Cartier. Um, in fact, in, in the late uh, Moschino Toy Boy, it's very kitschy, but the, that kind of, you know, spicy, 
more of a masculine kind of a rose. I love it. When, is it, when, when I find it very oriental, very like old school, like, with, like rose it's supposed to smell, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not for me. And, and like I say, it, it, it's, it, I think I have a bad association maybe, I don't know if my grandmother used to have a perfume with rose and maybe one day she grounded me and I was like, you know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. perfumes take you back. So you'll grow out of it. Yeah. Just give it some time. And like, I, like all the notes, I think they are an acquired taste. And, you know, I, I always say you all, all the things that you eat right now, if I had, if I had given to you when you were a kid, maybe you have, you know, uh, you didn't like it, but now, you know, you enjoy mustard, you enjoy wine, you enjoy some kind of things mm -hmm. that your brain has to, you know, process. Yeah. Totally. I mean, there was a time I didn't like, you know, white flowers, but I really love white flowers now in perfumes. I mean, there was a time I didn't like roses in perfumes. There was a time I didn't like vanilla. Oh my God. <laughs> and now you want to do a perfume with vanilla. So yeah. Oh yes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's a journey. It's a, it's a, it's a way of, you know, and, and, and that's why I think, uh, most of the people that starts with commercial ends up in niche. It's not because it's better or, or, or hipster. No, it's because your nose becomes, as a, you know, um, it comes, uh, it has your a nose taste. matures, yeah. develops. So as you, as, as you develop, you start, you start to smell other things and say, eh, I don't like it. But that doesn't mean that what you and I like, it's going to be, you know, for the like of everybody. In fact, if you wear a perfume that you love into a party, you're not going to get maybe any compliment because people are going to say, what the hell is this guy? Yes. That's yeah. usually me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, that's why not a lot of people hang okay. around. And uh, that's why not a lot of people come near me when I'm at a party. They're like... His perfume is so strong. What is he wearing? Oh, but now you have a story to tell. And I love that. What are you smelling? Well, let me, mm. let me tell you about it. And then, you know, you, can, you, you have a new friend because otherwise, uh, if everybody smells like Sauvage, and, uh, I just hate yeah. that, you know? Yeah, I hate that too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Sebastian, I don't want to take more of your time. Uh, obviously. Thank uh, you. I'm, 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 I'm hoping this is not the last uh, of the, this kind of talks that we can have. But this uh, fun. I really appreciate the time. And uh, Yeah, thank you. So uh, really have a great day. And uh, like you I too. said, I really like what you do. So keep up the good. Thank time. you so much. Appreciate it. Maybe one day I'll come to Mexico City. Oh, when, when you do, please let me know. And I will, you know, uh, take you around. I know there's some Lebanese people down there. Oh yeah, there's a great community here, and in fact, I have to say that I love Lebanese uh, food. There's a no good uh, club like a mile down here, and I go like every two months to eat. Oh, I wow. love Lebanese food. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. Anyway, awesome. So, uh, well, like I said, I really appreciate the time, and You're let's welcome. let's hope uh, we can meet each other maybe on Exence last year. Hopefully. I hope so. Fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> anyway, so All right. see you, man. All right. Chao. Bueno, para todos aquellos que se hayan quedado hasta el final, la verdad es que espero que la hayan hecho porque a mí me encantó la entrevista. Sí, ya sé, quedó un poquito larga, pero la verdad es que cuando estás hablando con alguien, pues, ¿no? Que, que, que tienes mucho en común y quieres saber más, me hubieran faltado dos horas más. Entonces, pero pues, bueno, espero que te haya dejado ahí algunas cosas interesantes y que haya sido de tu agrado. Si fue así, no te olvides de darme like, no te olvides de registrarte a mi canal, pícale la campanita para que la próxima vez que suba un video no se te vaya a ir. También, obviamente, no te olvides de checar el canal de Sebastián, que seguramente ya lo conoces. Entonces, todo se lo voy a dejar acá abajo. Y finalmente, eh, revisa mi Instagram. Te voy a dejar aquí la dirección para que te metas, me sigas y veas las, las fotos y las reseñas de los perfumes que, que tengo ahí arriba. Entonces, nos vemos en el próximo capítulo.